Thank you for coming in. So what I wanted to share in this uh, workshop is my experience and uh, how I bore some scars in trying to write the requirements and define requirements and specifications for a product or multiple products. So quickly, uh, rundown of the agenda. First, I want to do a little bit of a scenario setting and how I uh, got into this kind of a framework. And then we'll do a trial run, a few minutes, of a product and see how, how we will approach a specifications for a, for a product. And then I put forth my simple model, which I devised. Said, OK, if I use this model, and that will keep me on track to actually make my product when I do specify it will meet the market requirements. And also, on the other hand, keep my engineers happy. They understand what I'm saying and what I want them to do. Instead of going, this is not what I asked for. I don't want this, right? So I am a pretty strong product manager. I, I have about 20 plus years of experience. Five years back, I said, OK, I got this. I know how to do these specifications. I can do it for web applications. I can do it for mobile because I worked in Hippocrates. I said, I know everything, right? And then uh, one of the companies I was working for, they were like, why, uh, Padma, why don't you just write up the product specifications for this product X? The only catch is the team is in India. The development team is in India. I said, OK, so what does that mean? You have to finish your product requirements, run it through the VP of engineering here, and then convey it to the team over the phone. I said, not a bad deal. So I went head down wrote up a thick product requirements document, and I worked on it for a couple of weeks and then gave it to my VP of engineering. And guess what he does? He read the whole thing, and I was like, seriously? You think I'm not good enough? And I gave uh, flows, and I gave uh, use Look at this. I thought I, I had done a great job, and he was like, no, redo the whole thing, come back, and we'll take it from there. So. And he was like, this is not what I asked for. I said, OK, fine, let's go through what he wants. And I'm sure on the other hand, I've been in companies where we went head down into requirements and also the implementation. We implement the product and then take it for beta testing to customers. And they're like, I'm not going to pay for this. This is not what I asked for. Hi, come on in. So that's where I said, OK, both on the customer end and on the engineering side, I have to do something. I mean, this is madness. So my mind said, put a method to the madness, right? And I'm a product manager, so I'm a problem solver. So I want to come up with some solution that other people can also use. Or I can use it over and over again. I can, I can reuse it. So I said, OK, how can I effectively, on one hand, communicate to engineers so that the product I take to the market fits the need, right? So we hear a lot about Dan Olson's lean product management and so on and so forth. So I said, how do we do it? So I used the KISS <coughs> principle, keep it simple, stupid, which is, I'm a stupid here. So I put forth a five W's model. Before I put the five W's model, let's think of a product where we don't have much of it on, in the market today. Let's think of, hey, my market need is to reduce wastage of food in every home by effectively managing the food in the refrigerator. OK, think about it. Uh, we don't have, probably there are, I won't say we don't, probably there are apps already, but think of a simple driver in the market. Want to reduce wastage of food by managing the food in the refrigerator. And that will also give me a side driver of putting, um, I mean, reducing the panic before you go for grocery shopping. How would you, how would you actually attack a problem like this? I just said, hey, I need a product for this. I'm one of your customers, or I'm one of your engineering people. I need a product for this. Can you please specify this product? What would be your first step? Well, first I'd ask is what, what information do I get from the refrigerator? OK, great, OK. Let's assume we have the refrigerator full of sensors. Right. It can sense the weight the, of the product. It can sense the, it has a barcode reader mm -hmm. that gives you, tells you what the product is. Right. Tells you the expiry date on it. Okay, she has expiry date, okay. And it's all, it's all going to the cloud. 
Okay, mm -hmm. so sure. that part, let's assume. We're not yeah. doing the hardware. That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good place to start. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're right. The hardware is covered, but I just want to make sure I have the information. That's the right. point. Right, right. So you get four things. Uh, food. What it is. Uh, what it is, and the cat, like it could be dairy milk, dairy tea, mm -hmm. right? And then you get the expiry date. You get the quantity, because it has a weight sensor. Sure. It, if you bought a half a, half a gallon, you, and it's, it's a pint that's available, it says it's yeah. still a pint. And then the expiry date. The other thing um, I need to know is what do I need? You know, is it, is it, you know, okay, I'm going to the grocery store, what do I, you know, I need my forecast. Right, you know right, I mean? right. Yeah, so I mean, you gotta, you gotta, and then the, the requirement's gonna reconcile those two things. You Correct. Kind of, and I'm really over summarizing it here because we have short time. Right, no, that's uh, absolutely right. I mean, those are the thoughts. Yeah. Go ahead. What are you going to use this for? Yes. What, where are you going to use it? What are you going to use it yeah. for, right? Yeah. So those are the questions, the Ws, that I said, okay, let's put, put it through. Actually, this is, these are great answers, I mean, because it's like, okay, what are you going to use it for? Keep that in mind, that's, that's the biggest goal, right? I mean, if you keep that in mind, then any specifications you write will just build up to that. So that way it will be easier to build up the specifications rather than say, hey, you know, So here are the five Ws, right? And the first one is why. I mean, this is what I came up with. I'm sure each of us have it. Like you said, what are we going to use it for? But the way I did it is I said, okay, why? Why is this product needed for the market? To reduce wastage of food in homes, right? I mean, I have a home, four people, she has six people, you have two, and so on, right? So why do we need this product in the market? What is the actual reason? And if you keep that in mind, then the features that come out of it will answer the first question, right? Who are the people who are going to use it? It's meant for household yeah. people, right? Consumers. Anybody who's going to plan a meal, who is running the groceries for the house, who's fixing meals, so on and so forth. The one thing, one clue here is you don't just answer it once and leave it. You say, who else? Right? Some of the products have multiple mm -hmm. users. For example, my healthcare product, I'm a healthcare product manager, right? So if I give any user interface, one would be patients, patients using it and trying to check their own blood pressure, their own vitals. The other would be care managers who are responsible for the patient's health, right? So the UI for them would be different from the UI for the patients. And the third would be actual admins who are managing the product, right? So those are the things, who else, who else? You, I mean, you go through a couple of iterations. Sticking to the why, you stick to the why. Hi there. Hi, sorry to put That's there. okay, no, I, I tried to give some time because it's quite a trek up. So I just got started and the whole, the topic is, this is not what I asked for. Yeah. We usually write requirements, product requirements that really don't meet what the engineers need or the customers need. So I put forth a small framework which will answer, which will actually keep to the guidelines. So we went through who else, who else, and we got two who's for our simple product, right? And then what, the what I use for, what are the features this product should do? I as a household, I, I as a person responsible for fixing meals, I need to use this app. So what are the features that it should have? First thing I can think of is generate grocery, grocery list, right? Because I said all the data is going to the cloud. I need one, some, something simple on my mobile app saying, hey, generate, I want a single button click. Generate grocery, grocery list for me now. So it'll be the delta of what's there and what else do I need, right? So what does that bring? What else? Somewhere at some time, I have to tell my app that th these are the things that I need for my household for the whole week. So I say I need two gallons of 1%, one gallon of fat-free, right? I configure those things. So I need a functionality to configure. Mm -hmm. Th there you go, right? So what else would I need? Usually when I'm in the grocery store and my husband is in the grocery store, he says, hey, can you check the fridge? Or you send the kids down and say, go down and check the fridge and see if this is there, right? Mm -hmm. A camera that I can look into the fridge. Camera, or I can say, I can search on a single item. I can say, give me the status of how much milk I have. Right? I have a search bar. And I say, 
milk, how much? And it output saying, as of an hour ago when I polled, when the database polled the refrigerator, you had a gallon. You really don't need it, right? So that's the other thing. <coughs> I, I want to be polite. We realize we're in the wrong room. I'm oh, so whoa, sorry. Whoa, sorry. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And then, where are these people going to use the features, right? When, what is the trigger to use the product? For me, when I'm going from work to a grocery store on the way, that's when I'm going to trigger this product. So if I keep, so when I trigger this product, I don't stop right there, right? When I trigger this product, what should happen? And then, and then, and then, right? If I press this, if I press that, so, if I want to search for one particular item, I say status, search, and then what should happen? And then what else would I need, right? I might need to know a list of all the dairy products I have. How much cheese, how much milk, what? So, and then, and then, if you keep answering that, it goes into one feature, and it gives you, flushes out the details of that feature. Usually, what my watts, I put in one of these four quadrants, um, you have things like functional requirements, then you have security, my data, my fridge data should not be shown to anybody else, right? Yours I shouldn't see, mine you shouldn't see, that, that would go into uh, security. And then you have user experience saying, uh, it has to be a one click, it has to be two clicks, no, no, we have to get some more data, that goes into user experience. And then performance, if I have an app like this, I could have, if I'm running this app, I could have a million concurrent users, right? I mean, so my app shouldn't fail. So usually my watts fall into one of these four quadrants. So these are the preconditions, and this is why I need. Now let's apply these five Ws to our famous product. And why I, again, I want to reduce the wastage, but these are all the sensors that are available. Everything, all the data is going directly into the, um, in, into my database. And we said, who, who else, who else? Product managers, we usually go through user personas, and we go deep into, uh, okay, uh, gender, how, do, how would they like to see this, the emotions, and so on and so forth, right? So anything cutesy, anything quick would be good for the kids. And uh, how much junk food do you need? And if, they, if you let them control, they'll like it, right? So those are the things that you go into who's and who else, and the user personas, you kind of describe it a little bit more. <coughs> but because this is a smaller workshop, I mean, I'm kind of scrunching up to just a few who's. Look at the number of watts I got. I said, generate a grocery list. Sometimes I want to know, I want to clean my fridge, and I want to know all the food items that are going to expire. I'm very famous for pushing food to the back in my fridge. I have a deep fridge, and then everything is dying at the back, and it's all fungus, and I'm like, where is this? And I go and buy some more and come, right? So I throw again all these fungus things, and then I buy some more, I do the same thing, I push it to the back. So it goes on and on. So those are some of the things that you want to select, and you want to be able to do with your app. And my app should not display others' data, and search for a status of a food category. And I came up with like, I gave it like five minutes thought, and I came up with seven or eight items, right? and give it some more thought, you can do a lot more. But as a product manager, the first thing you need to think of is what's an MVP? What's the first version that I get out into the market? That will satisfy the customers, and then I can do the rest, right? Like you said, I would like to have it, I would like to have a display on my refrigerator, I would like to use my mobile app with this app, and also on the desktop. These are the triggers when I would like to use these things. So, if we go through a simple what, when, and keep, keep these things in mind, we can easily, the couple of things I usually use, actually three, uh, for defining requirements. I use a process flow, UI, mockups or wireframes, and the last one is a user story. So, I, the user stories are what go into Jira, and, hi there. Hello. In the right room? 308? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, so last one, they usually put it, uh, project managers put the requirements, the user stories into Jira, and there's a product backlog, and so on and so forth. So let's just 
So let's say we started with our, our phone and um, these are all the apps that we have on our mobile phone. Let's call this, for lack of any other name, a food app. <laughs> so let's think through what happens. I click on this food app. I said why I need this app. We came up with a few, uh, few functionalities. So when they click on the food app, the first picture is this. What are the buttons that you'd like to see here? So you want to come up and just put a button there. You can write maybe generate grocery list because we thought of it. Yeah. Or you can either you stick it or you can just write. What do you want to do? Sure, I'll stick it. Okay. Um, it makes it more visual. What's the next thing we would want to do? We're talking about a, an app and writing requirements for an app for figuring out what food is in the refrigerator and to generate a grocery list. All right, and then... What would you like to put there? Maybe something for search. Search, yeah. yeah. Search would go as a bar here. Okay. Or you can draw it. Or where do you want to put the search? I mean, you can. However. What, you want to what does the first one say? Generate grocery list. Generate grocery list. Sorry, yeah. my handwriting is kind of. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> search and what would you like to do, Richard? Oh. Uh, maybe. These, uh, oh. you, you can check here, right? Or how about uh, sir, uh, displaying list of food items? Um, what I was saying, like, what? Um, how can I do this? What's expiring? Or like, I, I want to link it back to what, what's what's need. What I what do I need? How do I link it to what I need? Okay, so you want to check the list of food that's expiring? Yeah, that's going to expire this week that I need to replace. So you uh, check the thing where we give you a date. Maybe uh, when you click on that button, we give you a date, and you say what's expiring by two days, in the next two days. Yeah, right, yeah, relative dates. Right, right. right. Yeah. right. And um, I really need a uh, ability to define what are the things typically my food should have every week. Okay, so you're talking well, about yeah, setting up the data. Yeah. And so basically, it's a, it's a feature of generate, but generate based on what? Well, so these are my lists. These are my needs that I wanted at any beginning of the week. This is the quantity. This is the number of items. These are the items. This is the quantity I need. Absolutely. Yeah. That. Can then, we call it a configuration? Yeah. Well, okay. You call it min max, I think. Isn't that, isn't that all under the min max? Yes. That you yeah. go into min max. So you go into you hit one configuration button, and it should throw you a list of hey. How much of milk do you need? How much of butter do you need? At the beginning of the week, at the end of the week, what's your min amount, what's your max amount? Do you want to come and put uh, that configuration? Settings or configuration, it's up to you. I'm defining my... Absolutely, absolutely. Define my boundaries, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's a one-time thing. Or you can also change it, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you do it once, but then you're going off on vacation, right? You change it. Basically, set it up. Yeah. What else did we miss? Uh, we have a search bar there? Yeah, the search. All right. Then let's assume we'll take one of these and let's say we're hitting the. We can do two exercises. We can, let's say we're hitting the generate grocery list. So here's where we say, okay, how do we generate the grocery list? We first gather all the items. So let's put, let's, I ran out of uh, borders at that point. So what happens when we hit the generate grocery list button? The first thing we need is we need to gather all the items below min level. So you see, we are doing a process flow for the engineers yeah. at this point. We are saying at the back end, first gather all the items below the min level because that you definitely need, right? right. And then we are saying gather all items within two days of expiry because I'm going to go for groceries for the whole week and then gather all items below the max level, right? You usually need uh, three bell peppers. 
I only see two, right? Your ma you configured your max for three. I only see two. Would you need to buy another one? And you give, I give you a choice, and I say, do you need to buy another one or you don't want another one? And that's when you say, okay. So here I have. One screen I would have like this. About to expire, and I have. So I could have the food item here, expiry date, and I can also give you a quantity here. How many? How much of that is there, right? And then you go in and say yes or no, or and then um, after at the end, what do you think we should have? Once, let's say I select um, bell pepper. One percent milk, but I don't select the rest. So I select these two. What should happen next? This is where the what comes in, right? So what should happen next? Because again, remember the why. I'm going to go to the, when is I'm going to go to the grocery store. The why is because I want to reduce the wastage, right? I don't want and I don't want last minute panic. So if I'm going to the grocery store today, I might as well get something that I need. So once I selected a couple of items. Remember we hit the generate grocery button list, so I'm generating my own grocery list. Something called add would do, right? Yeah, add to I the mean, grocery yeah, list. Add, yeah, what are you adding to, I guess? I'm adding to my grocery list. Okay, so this is just like a, a, a part of, okay, this is just like a sample. Correct, of what you're yeah. Adding. So the other screen would be, um, if I open, I mean, since we hit the generate after this, I will have a, uh, a bag and the next. Mm -hmm. So this is when the and then and then comes up, right? right? So I click these, then I hit the next. When I hit the next, what happens is I will come up with a, a list of items below your min level or below your max level. I give you the same thing, and then you click on those, right? And then you finally hit the add, and then there is a done button here. You're done with all the screen. If you want to go back to the about to expire and change it, you can do it. Give, give the user that, give the user the next to go to the next. I'm done, I added everything, I'm done. I should get the list. So finally, the list should be like. Milk. Order with, it says one gallon. Because we went through the configurations, I know I need a gallon, right? And then I need a one pound butter and so on and so forth, right? Grocery list, March 31st. You're happy. So what we did when we answered the W's, we went what and then and then and we went back to our framework, we got a nice, if, if I spent five minutes drawing, I got a nice few, five or six screens. And what I did, if you want me to do a process flow, I can quickly do that. Process flow is for engineers. You talk to engineers and they'll say, uh, I, I don't understand this. You go to a UI person, give them this. Give them your list of, hey, this is what I'm looking for. You go to your engineers, you give your process diagram. And then you go to the project management. At that point, you have to give something like this. They are not going to accept anything else, right? So this is what is called a user story for uh, agile uh, methodology for product managers. Waterfall uses use cases. You can do the same thing in use case. But the only thing in user stories is they messed it up a little bit. I'm not a big fan of it, but what they say is, as a user, the user goes, so who? Right. As a user, as a person uh, running the I mean, running the house, I, what do I want to do? I want to finish my grocery shopping on my way home so I don't buy too much food. So I'm going back to the why. I don't want to waste too much food. And at the same time, I want to get everything I want. And these acceptance criteria 
or what, what the engineer should test against. What they use it is, okay, is this user story satisfied? Is everything being tested in the refrigerator? Is everything being tested? So they should have a test case for, I should see only my data. So they should run some tests of, with Mamtaz, Richard, and everybody's Fahim's uh, results and put it in there. And if it doesn't work, <laughs> then fail the case. So you can't pass this user story until you pa pa write test cases and run the test for every single acceptance criteria. So in the user story, the acceptance cr criteria is really, really important. So what we just did is we did a user story, a process flow, and a UI screen. Well, we are all done, we are all set. Now you take this user screen, you can even take it as a, a test for the customers. Have some, have a couple of people come in, press the button, see if this is what they like. We are missing something before you go into full implementation, right? And you uh, catch, catch it right there, put it into full implementation, and then say, okay, now you launch it to the public, and you know you'll never, you uh, chances of hearing this is not what I asked for, and I'm not going to pay for this will not come up. Chances are lesser. So, um, what is? Are you, are you saying that we are going to prepare different, different, different documents for different audiences? Is, it, is there one document, like, what is all this? So, usually the specifications you give to the engineer. So the, okay. So the engineers are your audience for your document. You can do different things in your document. Write a user story, put some screenshot, like we did, right? Or you can do a process flow. Usually all three will work. So this is primarily for engineers, but there's also project managers, there's also <coughs> QA, and, and there are other roles, right? Right, right. So, um, so then that, so what I'm trying to understand is, it should be one document that should be distributed to everybody. Yeah, otherwise we might be... Usually it's only one document. Okay. The QA will use the acceptance criteria. All their test plan test cases will come from each user story's acceptance criteria. So this is for the QA, right? And the screens are for UI developers. And then the process flow will be for the backend developers who write the code actually. So what you will do is, I don't know if I can draw on this, but I can draw a process flow here. Usually what we do for the engineers is you have a start and then you say, you have this, this means a process and you say, are there items that are expiring? So that is for the UI developer, right? No, the no. UI developers is the screens. And this is for the actual engineers. And like a flow chart, right? Exactly. It's like a pseudocode. So you, if they say yes, you take this. If the, if the answer is no, you take that, right? So depending on, so they go and get so the engineer knows, okay, I need to query the database to see if there's anything for this person that's expiring. And if it is, then this is what it is. And this is what, um, so who does this? Is it project managers or business analysts? So there are different roles, right? And they produce different, different documents. So basically, these are all requirements. These are all requirements of product manager who's usually responsible for them. And one document should give data for everybody. Yeah. So for QA, acceptance criteria, then for engineers, the process flow, mm -hmm. for UI people, the Come screens, on, yes. put everything in one thing, yeah. and the project manager says, okay, she's given the requirements document. Now, can I get the engineers to give me the design document, right? So the project manager has to go step by step by step. It's a checklist of documents. <coughs> Usually, there are, I mean, what I'm trying to avoid with this 5W is, it kind of, tra uh, if, if you don't train your mind to think, what happens is you go all over the place, you're involving the project manager, like 10 developers, five QA people, you have a, is it bothering you? I'm gonna take it out for a while, and then we put it back in. So, I mean, so <laughs> each of them have their own, I mean, like you, group of 25 people, how many resources have you wasted, right? Or the engineers come at you and say, if you don't do the screens properly, if you don't do the process flow, flow properly, they're like, I don't know what you want here. I mean, I, I don't know what you're trying to say here. 
you are, and then I keep saying, I want an app that uh, checks my fridge. I want an app that, I keep saying it, and then they get frustrated. And then finally, it's like you all end up fighting. So the best thing is, hey, here are my five W's. Do you all understand everything? Yes, we all agree with this. Okay, now I'm going to go do my requirements. And then I pull the UI person and say, these are the things I want. I pull the engineer and I say, these are the things I want. It could be a mobile app, it could be a web app, it could be just a backend thing, it doesn't matter. Just if you follow these things, and here, the only thing you need to do is for the first release, you go, need to stick to your MVP, yeah. minimum viable product. Because for example, if I say, hey, uh, okay, it's generating my grocery list, but I store my potatoes and avocado and onions outside, it didn't tell me. Right? I mean, the first thing is, hey, hey, that's an MVP. We'll give it to you 1.5, right? 1.5 release. Put the outside. So you have, you assume you have sensors outside, outside the refrigerator too, which also communicate. These days you can have sensors communicating to anything, anywhere, right? Hardware is not the problem. It's like collecting the data. So then you have like pasta. Put it on the, put it on a sensor, leave it there, right? So those are the things you can add as the next release. But if I don't give you a configuration, let's say I don't give you a configuration functionality, can I take it out as an MVP? First thing I'm gonna say, ah, this sucks, I'm sorry, I can't pay for this. And then I have to rush back and say, guys, we forgot this. Can we do this? So keep the customer in the loop. And you, what I do is, the, I run the five W's, the why back to the customer. That's exactly. it. I take my little uh, cheat sheet here, I go back to the customer and say, hey, you wanted it for this. If you press this, this is what happens. And I walk them through like a, what we did. Hit the generate button, and then you go to the next screen. Uh, can I see this on my screen? Can I, see, can I not see this? So that's how you kind of engage them in the conversation. And then when you put all, uh, and then you go through your five W's, checklist, okay, they, they did this, okay, they agree with this. When you do that at equal intervals, then it's a lot quicker, the engineers are happier because they want to see their product out in the market too, right? And they come to you for that. They expect you to know what they need. So doing that, and it's a little bit of a juggle. You go back to the engineers and you have to talk their terms. When the customer says this, I'm not going to change this. I'm like, no, 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 it's only one field. Let's just take out the checkbox. They want a radio button, and that's fine because they don't want us to give them a choice of selecting more than one. So I put a radio button, right? So those are okay. I mean, the engineers are fine doing that. So I go back each time, and I use my five W's as a checklist. This is slow. Well, one thing I want to mention is also, I think you should share the acceptance criteria with your customer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because I mean, they're ultimately, they're the ultimate acceptance. It yeah. depend, that depends on the application. Yeah. Because when I do the B2B, like the healthcare, there are certain test cases I don't have to share with them. There are we certain do. acceptance yeah. criteria I don't have to share with them. For things where security is concerned, things where um, how their admins are going, how the care managers are going to see, those are the things I need well, to share with them. Well, I think that maybe the functional requirements. Yes. Yeah, the functional requirements really Correct. Share with them. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. So they didn't know what they asked for. Right, right. It's yeah. what they asked for. And that's a very good thing. Because at least we need to make sure that uh, we don't miss on the important thing that a customer expects. Right? Yeah. Correct. Other add-ons from a non-functional aspect, to security, performance, that all can mm -hmm. be hidden or it doesn't have to be shared. Right. But so the core thing that they are expecting should not be missed in our. Correct. Exactly. Correct. Yeah, because even in healthcare, I mean, huge, huge uh, applications, right? I mean, it takes a lot of time. I'm talking about collecting, even if it's 50 patient data, I'm talking about collecting the data, storing it, giving them queries. So I don't know which they want, which uh, fields they want to query, and if I don't get that right, and I don't mm -hmm. present this model to them and go use it as a checklist, then at every point, it becomes a pain. Because sometimes what happens, and this has happened to me, at the customer end, I'm talking to one person. That person leaves, another person comes in. I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, seriously, you, she didn't give you a handover? I mean, she didn't give you training? And I have to go through the whole, I sit them down and say, okay, now you and I are talking. Let's go through the five W's. So if you have something like a framework, 
you go and say, okay, that checklist can go with anybody else. And it's frustrating when they don't do their own. And of course, she left probably in anger. I mean, she probably was upset with somebody, right? And she didn't hand over to the next person. And that person and I, we can't start off with a fight, so we have to have some kind of a contract that I say, okay, I follow this. And this has been taken quite well from all healthcare customers, but I, again, I just used this um, topic of reducing wastage of food because I didn't see many applications outside in the world. So I just picked that up and I said, okay, let's do that. So this is more of consumer, right? I have to ask people. But if it's healthcare, I only ask one, one person or a, a group of people. I don't have to, it's not a consumer. You have to ask your three people. You say the, the, the care managers, manager, patients, the patient, and, and my admin. And admin. Yeah. So, and, and, and they each have their own acceptance criteria. Absolutely. Yeah. They each have their own. They have different UIs. So sure. Completely different UIs, right? And the third thing is, I mean, the fourth thing is, I have to think of executive people. Um, the CIO wants a report. He doesn't want to see this UI. He doesn't want to click through 100 buttons and no. set the period where, where he wants to report. I have to give them canned reports. How it will be easy for them to get the reports with one click. So that's a totally different UI. So their login is different. So that's when I think, who else? Who else? And then for that who, you do the persona and then say, why would he? If you're a CIO, why would you want to see all the, all the patients? of your care managers. You really don't want to see, you want to report. How did all these patients, how did my care managers do? Managing the patients. You don't want to see the individual patients. Yeah, you don't have the time for it, right? So I don't even walk you through that UI. So as soon as you log in, I throw another phone to you. So that's where we go back, yeah. That's uh, just a quick question regarding, let's say you've finished your MVP and now you're doing an update. Mm -hmm. How much of this information do you need to repeat or provide to the engineer? Do you have to have a flow chart, you know, diagram? Do you have to have mock-ups or is the user story enough? Or is that dependent on the engineering decision-making? Usually, this is stored as an archive and usually yeah. when you're doing, a, um, let's say in our case, we are doing the outside food also. Yes, then that's 1.5. 1.5, you keep this as your background because it's already in production, right? Mm -hmm. And then you add another screen okay. for outside food. Okay. So that's another way of, so you add just one UI screen okay. to put in between so that you have the same thing, back, next, and the add, and the done. You have the whole thing, okay. but you just do one more screen for outside, food outside the refrigerator. Right. And then you give them that screen and they'll put it, and you give them the process flow and tell them exactly where you want that put in. Right. And first step or second step, and they'll put it in. As far as flexibility from an engineering point of view, how much flexibility do you want to use? Some engineering folks that I've worked with, sometimes don't like the flow chart diagram. Yeah. Well, how, yes. do you, how do you? Yeah. Some engineers want very specific. Yeah. Some, yeah. some, 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 some specific. give the story. Some of the stuff just, they, they don't want any flow chart. They don't want any flow charge, then give me the product at each mm -hmm. stage. Don't make me go, this is not what I asked for. Right. Okay? So if you want me to be happy with you and we right. have to meet the deadlines, then work with me, right? I mean, right. if you don't want flow chart, then why don't you do the flow chart and give it to me and let's see if it yeah. works, yeah. right? I've done that. It's actually a good idea because uh, no matter what, I think the flow chart's good because yeah. then yeah. you always can refer back to it if there are any inconsistencies, especially if you make assumptions in the, the five W's if you haven't listed those out. Right. That's where I think my biggest pitfall is. I assume that they can't see my assumptions. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. yeah. You need some visual too, that's the other thing. That's where I think some, I, some, yeah. you some kind of diagram, it doesn't have to be a flow chart or business process model, right. something, right. something visual. Right, see right. for example, if Marketing. I write a user story yeah. like this, yeah. it takes you long to read it, right? Yeah. I mean, if I gave, I gave yeah. you 15 okay. acceptance criteria, First thing they'll say, we are engineers, we have ADHD. We can't read, we can't focus. Right. So I'm like, okay, so what do you want? So I fell yeah. a lot of times, I fell, I picked up. I have a lot of scars, and then finally I came up with this model. I said, okay, five W's, quickly, right? And then here's your process flow. And then you want, now you want words, go back to my user story. 
Yeah. And for me, it helps me think clearly, right? As I go through the steps, and you want a picture, I'll give you a picture. I'll give you a UI picture. You want a flowchart, you want a user story, whatever, right? I mean, I have it there. What if I change one? I have to change everything. If they come back and say, you know what? I don't want this screen first, but I want the other one, so I have to end up changing my flowchart. Right, right. And then I, so it's, it's a little bit of maintenance nightmare. But if you do it the first time, it gets right. easier the second and third time. So even for the configuration uh, settings, I, I mean, I can write as till the cows come home, and in California, the cows, the cows don't come home, so I can keep <laughs> writing. But a little picture, a simple picture, a simple UI for the, so I had, I, I, just, I was just thinking about it for configuration. What is the first thing that we need? I was just thinking of five minutes, and I came up. I said, okay, first thing I need is text box. I need to enter, to set up. What if they gave me, I, I use uh, fresh turmeric. It's, uh, I store it in the fridge, but they gave me root vegetables, but they didn't give me this, so I need to add it on. I need to add it on to my configuration settings, right? So each of us have something like that. You have probably herb butter and not the plain butter, right? So each of us, so first thing that came to my mind is, okay, give them the category. Give yeah. them the, the availability to enter under a food category, an item. So next time it's generating, it's, it's, it's already stored. So the, those are the things, I mean, when you follow your thought process, it's very, I mean, go back to the five W's all the time, it's very easy to communicate it. And then actually the engineers who say, I don't like flowcharts and I don't like UI screens, don't come to me with those, they love it. Mm -hmm. They yeah, actually end that. up loving it because in the end, there are no finger pointing, right? I mean, if the customer didn't like it, they say, you didn't do it. And then you say, no, no, you, you messed it up, right? So you have a contract, where did you go wrong, right? Those are the things that I use. There's one more thing we forgot in the MVP, the red, the one in red, mm -hmm. right? But I can't, I mean, I can convince the customer and say, listen, this is just an MVP. It's not, I mean, we'll give it to you in the next release. Don't, don't, don't say I won't pay for it, right? I mean, nobody's going to be, uh, yeah, yeah, if you're going to give it to the next release, yeah, I'll take it, right? So there are things we're going to miss in the first MVP. Usually I cover it saying, this will not cover this scenario. There's a release notes, a product manager gives. It says, right. okay, this will not cover this, right. this, this, and this in this release. And look for the next release. So make it uh, grocery, fridge grocery <coughs> list. Yeah, I have to make it fridge grocery list, the first MVP. Yeah. I can't say, first I was thinking probably I'd say it's perishable. Uh-uh, the outside food perishes too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So and even the fridge grocery list, I went, uh, my, uh, let's say, we didn't think of one thing, right? Uh, alerts, notifications. Yeah. Your milk is expiring. Mm -hmm. your, uh, you have four more days to go for grocery, but your milk is expiring. So it gives you an alert saying, hey, you know, look at your fridge, your milk is expiring, can you take it and throw it out? So we need another functionality for that, right? Are we going to give it to the MVP? Are we going to give it later? It, that's a decision that we make, right? And then uh, I can come back and say, you gave me the alerts. It alerted when I was two days into my vacation. I am coming back to expired food. So that's, I mean, those are common cases that we can think of. And they come, they come under corner cases usually. So then the next, uh, our extension would be, what, what do you think the extension would be? Give me, think about a logical extension. I can, I can ask for, uh, um, based on the things I have in the fridge, generate a recipe and... Uh, well, and take it the other way around. Yeah, yeah. And, and then give it a recipe and then figure out what you need. That's what I would do, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that would not be MVP, I don't think. Yeah, no, that would not be MVP. Send the grocery list over to Safeway to 
But that would be another one. That's a come to your house and actually open up the fridge and put everything in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best. <laughs> you got to think about security on that one. But I mean, if you think about it, that would be the logical step. You know, the grocery list goes straight to Safeway, applies coupons at Safeway. Exactly. Then, we were thinking yeah, about that, right? We were thinking about coupons. Yeah. If there's wastage of food, yeah. you, it gives you a list of right. places that will take your food. Right, and well, those people that are filling up your fridge will take yeah. it, and then yeah. they'll take it to the, uh, the shelters or whatever. They'll come and pick it up, yeah. 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 And uh, sync it to your Google Calendar if you're going on vacation. Yeah. It'll say, hey, you're going to go on vacation, but this is going to expire when you're on vacation, so yeah. be careful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, before you go on vacation, start using these things up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we can think of extensions. Or now we a smaller can... package. Yeah. But if you know that far in advance, that's your right, yeah. yeah. You probably do. You can put it in. You see, well, it's, yeah, it's integrated with Google Calendar or whatever calendar. Right. Yeah. Google Now looks like probably all you need. Yeah. For, to, to start. Right. And then the recipes and the grocery stores and right. uh, coupons yeah. and yeah. places for sh I mean, shelter houses yeah. where they need the food. Yeah. So is there an application out there right now? No. So let's start. The, the interesting thing is, three years ago, another variation I thought, which is price. Yeah. Uh, I, I should be able to find out based on my buying pattern and uh, list price from others. So okay, this item, this is the place where you yes. can go now. So yeah. I had this, and you, you came up with this thing. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, that's well, pricing, yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. price is all over the place now. There was Back a product in, the day, in my head for the last three years. Okay? Uh -huh. and, and you're bringing up this one. Uh, is it so? Great. Well, how would we monetize it? How would we monetize ads? Yeah. Ads from my grocers. Yeah. Hey, I'm selling 25 cents yeah. off of this. I this that's true. Can you come? Think of your monetizing. That would be licensing. That is, that is part of the fee, yeah. but that can't actually give you enough revenue. In today's world, it's the ads, right? I mean, yeah. Well, ads are pretty useful and more useful in that context. Yes. Yeah. Especially yeah. in that, yeah, you're right at that point. Because you're, you're very you buy, know, sell, info, or Data centric at that point. Right. Because right. they'll know yeah. if you kind of move. Right. Because yeah. that's the case where I want ads. You know, like I right, say, right. Where it's saying, oh, you, you, know, you want, you need milk, but it, it, it says 15% off. You buy this brand, for right, example. Right, right. And it's okay, it's one brand, brand to the other. Right. Yeah. And if some if brand the grocer is introducing a brand or introducing a, an item, or oh, I have Swiss cheese right. in form of so and so and so imported, whatever, right? And then they announce it. That's how you, I mean, that's one way of monetizing. So, so those are all, like, you, you will need it in B2B also, right? If you tie up with uh, suppliers, right. and something is added, you will show up in, in your stuff, in your setup thing, it will come up. Right. It's B2B. Correct. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. You can connect to your calorie Partners, counter. partnerships. Yeah. If you're losing weight, you can connect it to your calorie mm -hmm. counter. Right. You can oh, yeah, yeah. Or something. It's yeah. IoT now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy, right? <laughs> That's, so, I mean, that's straight IoT. It is. IoT. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, um, we were, I was looking at it, and she was saying, you know, there are Samsung fridges today, uh -huh. yes, which display this, yes. but yeah. not all the data. All I want is four, four items. Food category, the item, expiry <coughs> date, and the amount. Yeah, the weight is not there really. Yeah. Yeah. Weight yeah. is not yeah. that What? Sensor. It sticks in the fridge. The sensors in the fridge need to be yeah, There is smart fridges now with yeah. many of the data that we talked about. Right, right. I mean, if you look at healthcare, for everything you have a sensor, yeah. right? Yeah. And they, it all connects Bluetooth pairing, it goes to your, uh, Fitbit goes to your phone and so on. We have it in the fridge, but nobody thought of an app yet. And I'm like, seriously? Okay, I can take a company out of It's out there because when I did research, there were, there were few there, but maybe it's not yet fully Market because we are dependent on the sensor. Hardware is the key, right? Yes. Yeah. See, a person like, okay, it's not like a separate piece, right? right. You have to put things together. Right. I can only think of software part. Be being a software engineer, this this will come to me. I can put all these things together. Yeah. But the hardware piece. Yeah. yeah. The right? hardware piece is like you have to manufacture the sensors and have the refrigerator people yeah, and actually work with those uh, within the hardware people, right? Yeah. Like the, yeah product itself, the fridge right. in this case. Right. Yeah. But once you're there, then all this will work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Good. Any other questions? Thank you. Oh, you're well, most welcome. Yeah. So hopefully it will help you all. Thank you for participating. Sure. Thank you.